they're doing it, radio, they're doing it a, a different, um, they have a different strategy for trans transitioning from analog to digital than they're doing on television. What they did in television is they basically said, okay, here, this is the, I'm sorry, this, this is the spectrum, <laughs> and this is the band where analog TV broadcasters broadcast. And what the government did when they said that we're going to move to digital television is they said, okay, TV guys, you're going to move up here, and you're going to broadcast in digital, and then this spectrum that you've been using, we're going to take that, we're going to sell it, and we're going to use it for new applications. So for wireless internet or for high-speed, you know, kind of wireless applications. And so that transition is under is underway. And next February, hypothetically, if they don't change the date, if you have rabbit ears, if you get over their television, you're going to have to buy a converter box, or you're going to lose your ability to watch TV. Radio, they're doing a different technology, which I kind of think is is smart. They're actually integrating the digital signals right on top of the analog signals. And so we're yet to see how this is going to work, but it's not, it, it hypothetically is not going to be as disruptive as the TV side because you're not going to have to get rid of your radios. There will be analog broadcasting as far as the eye can see, and it's just going to be over time. If they create compelling enough content, consumers are going to be incentivized to go and buy these new radios if they really think there's stuff to go buy. Now, the problem, of course, is that there isn't been, there's, there's been no compelling content. You know, again, what they're, they're, they're playing are sort of jukebox versions of what they already have on the existing radio stations. What you're seeing in public radio is something different. Public radio has something called the Tomorrow Radio Project, where what they're trying to do is they're trying to look at this a additional capacity as a way of bringing music back to public radio. As, as many of you know, uh, NPR and the public stations have been getting away from music programming, and they've been going much more aggressively towards news and talk. So in, again, to use DC as an example, WAMU has historically been one of the most important bluegrass radio stations in the country. They phased out bluegrass in DC and they've gone almost all news talk, but they're using their second channel to bring blue, uh, bluegrass back. And then what they're doing is they're going out to their listeners and they're saying, if you're interested in this, if you're a bluegrass fan, if you want to hear bluegrass music again on WAMU, we'll actually give you a radio. They're actually giving radios to their listeners just to kind of see demand and build awareness. So we, we're looking at what's happening on the public radio side as sort of the model. Or, you know, it's a lot more interesting or compelling because, again, they're looking at niches that they'd like to fill for cultural or artistic or uh, localism reasons and really being aggressive with their programming as opposed to what the commercial guys are doing, which tends to be just not particularly compelling. <laughs>